Okay, big boy, let's do this. One of the key factors for any successful angler is to master presentation. And because I'm not a master at anything, I better sharpen up. It can take a great deal of time and patience to find that perfect spot. Understanding your environment and the tools that you're using are vital to getting a good result. And once you work out that perfect blend of rigs, bait and location, you achieve perfection. Hmm, yeah, well, I'm sure there are exceptions to the rule, I guess. Whatever level of experience you have, whether you're a professional or a pleasure angler, presentation is... Oh, for God's sake. Right, that's it. I'm done. Goodbye. I am so late. I should have been here a couple of hours ago. Hey, what are you going to do? I love it here. It is so peaceful. Wow, it seems an age since I was here last. And to think that this place actually inspired me to become a videographer and get back into my angling. You know, it's the perfect ticket. It's mature, it's super tranquil, and it's got some stunning fish in here too. I said earlier, we are a little bit late to the party. We're creeping into dusk, which basically means it's bite time. So I've got to be pretty stealthy and speedy with finding three spots to present my baits. The three spots that I've found so far, well, they're not exactly perfect, but they'll be okay to present a bag of goodies on. I can always do a reassessment in the morning. Three rods on their spots and the swim all tidy, I can set my focus on the more important things in life, my stomach. So on tonight's menu we've got giant fish fingers, flatbreads and garlic mayo. It's probably best to stay away from the beans on toast, eh? Oh, that was a joke. It wasn't really how I cook. I'm pretty good at cooking actually. I'll shut off. Go to bed. So this is where it all began, my very first vlog back in 2020. My journey back into fishing has been an incredible one. I fished with some great people, caught some wonderful fish, and I get the privilege of walking the banks of such beautiful lakes like this. This beautiful 
Nine Acre Lake is called The Mill and it's based in Chelmsford in Essex. It's one of the many lakes that are available on the Essex Carp Syndicate ticket. With its intimate bays, reed lines and overhanging willows, it's a real treasure. The lake is stocked with plenty of beautiful English carp, including 20 30s and five fish over the magical 40 mark. As I said, the perfect ticket. The following morning we're up bright and early, but unfortunately there's been no action on the rods. I did hear quite a lot, whoa that's some serious hat hair going on there, jeez. Anyway, we've got 48 hours to formulate and action a plan. So after a quick wash and brush up, we get ourselves together and get, oh for God's sakes, what a child. Yeah, well done. You've brushed your teeth. Well done. Good boy. So we're back at the mill. The very first venue where I did my very first vlog. And it hasn't changed. Well, it's more mature, obviously, but it's it's absolutely gorgeous lake. And yeah, we arrived here yesterday afternoon after work. Did the usual sort of walk around the various different bays. There's quite a lot of weed up in certain parts of the lake. And certainly where I am now, I'm on a swim called Drains, which has been producing, which is great. And I have seen a few fish moving in here as well so I've kind of made this decision based on seeing fish out into the open part of the or the mouth of this bay and also they're known to come into the bay in the day and sort of wallow around the weed areas so um, there is quite a lot of weed in here um, I had my um, lead out first thing yesterday and found a few flat spots so they're not clear but they were fishable definitely fishable so you know I ended up putting three bags out last night and but they felt quite flat you know there was weed but it's very low low level weed um, as you kind of get more into this into the corner here there's quite a big clump of weed and it's, it's vision you can see it on the top here so you know what you're aiming for um, but I know that the fish love it in there and the weed itself, well, it's, um, I think it's Canadian and there's quite long strands as well. So, you know, the best thing here is if you do get a fish is obviously to drop the lead as quickly as possible and just, well, fingers crossed basically. But yeah, I'm not worried about the weed itself. I think it's just finding somewhere to present a bait. Um, later on, I'm going to try a slightly different tactic, I think. Um, I want to do presentation. I want to try and work out, you know, which presentation works the best. So I'm going to try three different rigs. Um, I've got three different spots. I've actually seen quite a few fish jump out into the mid part of the mouth of the bay here. Um, so I'm going to go and explore that as well. Um, I did get a few nice drops out there. So I think what I'm probably going to do is focus on the bay in the day there's a few nice bubbles coming out here uh, but yeah focusing the, on the bay in the day and even maybe you rest it as, as well I don't have to fish it I just want to maybe put some bait in there let the fish feel secure and then fish it properly tonight but yeah there are fish moving about which is a good thing I think one of the things I don't want to do is get lost in the technicalities of fishing so even though I'm talking about presentation here, I don't want to get to the point where I'm thinking I've got 17 different rigs 
which one do I use? You know, you kind of want to get into that comfortable place where you're enjoying your fishing. You know that there's three or four in your arsenal and that will do the job. You know, if it's weedy, whether you choose, you know, a naked shot or, you know, a bag, you know, whatever the, whatever the situation is, obviously there's different, you know, substrates and different um, locations where you're fishing. But, you know, for me, I want to feel comfortable, I want to feel happy in my fishing. And kind of a, almost like a bit, you kind of get settled. So you get to your location, you have a lead around, feel what you, you're working with. And I'm certainly you're working with a lot of low line weed in certain areas. So I know that I can do, you know, a longer um, rig. So actually that, it, you know, uh, the lead will bury into. It's not soft here, that's for sure. I've got a nice donk, but there must be at least, I would say, probably, a, you know, a foot of low line weed, which, you know, I can, I can work, work with that with my long rigs and actually sit the bait on top and make sure that it's you know critically balanced so that it actually does float down you know all of that stuff i'm happy to do you know my thing you know i like the idea of exploring of course but i think you can get lost in that whole media thing watching too many videos too many articles talking to too many people about ways to do things and you know i've been there i've been there uh, for many many years having been in the media i'd know what it's like to actually market 17 rigs. You know, that's what the industry does. It wants to give you options, which is great, but then I think you need to then settle on the ones that work for you. And I, for me, it's, you know, I say three, three rigs that I'm happy with. You know, I'll always go for my spinner. I love my spinner rigs. Um, I'm working with the German rig as well. I actually quite like the German rig. That's, that's a lovely, lovely thing to tie. And again, a chod um, and I have used it on leaders but actually naked as well so at least I've got sort of three three working rigs just watching this swan it's eyeing up my bait <laughs> but um, yeah I'm trying to keep a calm head and feel comfortable again in my fishing so yeah we'll see how that pans out shall we <laughs> So yeah, it's great to be back here. It's a beautiful lake, as I say. It's a syndicate, and you know, on the ticket that I've got, I've got the choice of the mill, which is here, the day ticket, which is just over there, which is lovely again. That's the mill day ticket. I've got the sanctuary, which is prolific angling, and obviously then the the, the beast of the beast, which is in my hometown of Coggeshall, is the rise, which has got some phenomenal fish in there and it's one of those places that I, I again I didn't did one piece on the rise uh, didn't have any fish on that session I have had fish out of there but it's a, another place that I'd like to go back and explore I think I might go with somebody who knows that water a bit more but it is um, yeah a great great ticket great syndicate to be be part of and certainly this the mill is just beautiful. You just feel very comfortable. Swims are all lovely and you know, all set out for, you know, to be quite private. I've got a guy fishing just up the way here, one on the point, and I, you know, I don't hear them. We get our own spaces in the water. It's just, it's just awful, awesome. I was gonna say awful then. <laughs> but the mill is actually so beautiful. It's so lovely here, it's mature lovely big you know reed beds and willows overhanging willows and yeah it's gorgeous here right in front of me i've got um, a swan and a, and a baby sitting on a nest which is quite cute um but yeah uh, bait wise well i'm going to use sort of pop-ups on on the actual rigs themselves uh, but i've got crushed up sail thanks dave levy um crushed up sail with lots of pellet I've got a little bit of nut in there as well. Um, it's obviously, you've got to buy the nut and prepared nuts from uh, the lake. But yeah, it's, um, it's a, my first approach anyway. So I'm going to give that a go for 24 hours, see how it goes. You know, if I see any fish, obviously, I've just seen a fish roll there. Uh, if I see any fish, good timing. I'm, I'll, you know, I might even break out the floaters. I've got floaters as well. I've got 
you know, various different bait tactics and, but yeah, I kind of want to try and do a bit of presentation work here and see if there's, you know, if there's any better ways to do it. I think, you know, a naked chod over in this, in this corner here might do pretty well, feel quite safe as long as it's not caught up in the weed. Um, but yeah, we'll give it, a, give it a go and see how we get on. It's mid-morning now and I've seen no signs or shows of carp. Sitting behind motionless rods, well, it's just not the one. So I'm off to explore. And fortunately for me, I've had some great intel about the next bay along. There's been a lot of good fish showing, so it'd be rude not to have a chat with the angler who was there the night before. This is a swim, there's a lot of fish in here at the minute. We've seen a lot of fish out there. Yeah. I've done a night, in, I've just on the way, you know I'm leaving in a minute. I've yeah. done two nights, I've done a night in there and a night around the corner. I lost the fish in there, so I come round here yesterday morning, had four takes, lost all three of them due to the weed, which is the same. Heavy. Yeah, it's heavy in that bay. I've raked it out now, I'm on my way to work now, but I've raked it out. So next time, hopefully I'll land a few more. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, this is a swim. I've seen so many fish in here this morning, all off of this weed here, yeah. all boshing out. Might... Cool, yeah. <laughs> as, I, as I said, I was about to say, they come around here, they're everywhere. There's a lot of fish. So you're fishing on the bottom? Yeah. Fishing on the bottom. I think there's a bit of silt out there. I'm just fishing the heli helicopter yeah. set up so the rig sits on top of whatever's out there. The right road's a bit more gravelly because I believe there's an old road that when they built, uh, dug the uh, lake out, I'm sure they said there was an old, uh, I don't know, this yeah. is just what people have told me, yeah. but yeah. But yeah, I've done all right at this swim. Last time I was here, I had a 30 pound, 30 pound six lever off that road, fishing out to the right. And then the swim over there, if you aim to that, the, there's a pylon, yeah. just to the right of that, eight wraps out, there's a nice like soft spot like that. And uh, yeah, I've done a few fish out of there. This, this swim holds a special place in my heart as well. It's, it? it's held my PB, yeah. I'll look after it, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> 36 pound off of that spot there. Oh, All right, so no problem. Well, so much for not being swayed by others. But with that kind of information, there's only one thing you can do. It's really not in my nature to pick up and move. I'm one of those comfort bears. You know, once I've got my cave, that's where I'm gonna live. But I've only got a short spell of time here, so I need to utilize every bit of information as best as possible. I just want to say a big thank you for flying Air Noddy today. We've just landed and I hope you go on to bigger and better things. So with everything back in its rightful place, we get back on with the fishing. After a little bit of searching, I found three decent spots, and I've baited up 
with crushed boily, crushed nuts and some pellet. Fingers crossed, we made the right decision to move. Now, it may surprise you to know that I don't think about food all the time, only when I'm awake. But I did notice these wonderful gems on the way from swim to swim. Blackberries, and tons of them as well. Oh, I remember having blackberry crumble when I was young. Oh, that was so delicious. Foraging in nature, is there anything better? some really difficult decisions to make. It's one o'clock, the fishing's pretty slow. Got to make a choice. Hang on a second, please tell me you're not going to move again. We've just found the blackberries over there. Is it going to be the sweet and sour pot noodle? or the sticky rib. What do I do? I mean, the sweet and sour is, you know, proper old school. But then you've got the new boy, which is the sticky rib, which is good. And by the way, I'm not paid to do this. I'm not sponsored by Golden Wonder or whoever it is now. <laughs> I just got to make a choice. Oh my God, just get on with it, man. I think I'm going to go for the sweet and sour because that is proper old school. You know, yeah, I'm going to go for that one. This one, sticky. <laughs> oh, well, well, hang on a second. One minute we're talking about the wonders of nature, you know, blackberries, and, and now you're talking about processed crap from another golden wonder. Where is your brain? What's going on? I don't understand. So the traps are set, my belly's full, and all that's left to do is pray to the carp gods. Oh, and watch the bats fly around as well. Well, 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 talking of golden wonders, well, we've got one. The carp gods have smiled down on us once again. Morning call. Oh, wake up call. Look at that. 27 pounds of hard fighting common. Look at the size of that tail. That's incredible. That one came on my right rod. It's about half a six now. But what a stunning looking creature. Very long. Huge great big tail on her as well. <laughs> really happy with that. So 
Well done. Let's get you back. So it would seem that the uh, big move yesterday paid off and I'm pleased I did it. You know, I'm not normally one of those guys who, who likes to move around. I like to get comfortable and I like to be, you know, give somewhere a chance, but I'm also a lazy sod as well. But I kind of got that feeling that actually after seeing how many fish were in there yesterday afternoon, having a chat with the guy here, it was just a no-brainer really. So six days later, I moved everything in and yeah, got all three rods on chods. Got about a foot from the lead. So I've got quite a lot of space up the line and left rod is hitting the back bank, which is a, it's a big weed bed over the back there, but I'm kind of this side of it. Not the greatest um, drop on, on the lead, but at the same time, it's not the heavy, thick weed. I'm, it's, it's kind of low, low lying. These two here are 10 wraps out middle and then out towards the swim over the bat there. And it was actually my right rod that went this morning. So I know they're about, and they are still showing. There's feeding fish in the mid here. There's a few jumping over the bat there amongst the weed and behind the weed. So I've put one out on the bat there and we'll just see, see what happens. Yeah, but I am pleased that I actually did make the jump in the end. You know, I think it was all about, this thing was all about change and, you know, how we should try and stick with our things we know. But actually, this is a great example when you should be changing. You know, if you see fish, you should always chase them. So that's what I've done, and I've had one. <laughs> Well, it's only taken me a year and a half to get back here and fulfill that promise. Well, I've finally done it. I've done my session and I've caught a fish. I am proper made up. This place is outstanding. It's a beautiful, beautiful lake. There's some great food to be, no, no, there's some great fish to be caught and I'm looking forward to getting back here again. One thing I really want to focus on is, is actually you know, getting to a very comfortable place in fishing and getting there. But yeah, I arrived here last night, well, yesterday afternoon. Such a wake Dick. My two right and uh, middle rods are out on this 